Hey community, it's Natasha here, your travel guidess, and I am super pumped today to bring to you top five tips to make your flight attendant feel appreciated, featuring Miss Kristen Valenti. So Kristen, just take a few moments and let the people know who you are. Uh, hi guys, I'm Kristen. I am based out of New York City and I work for a major airline as a flight attendant. Um, and I came about through being in the hospitality industry and then going and running headfirst in my love for travel. And that's how I got to be a flight attendant. Um, so Kristen, my first question to you is why the airline industry? Uh, travel is the biggest thing. That's why we're all here, right? Um, <laughs> I get so much out of traveling. I learn so much and that's just my way of life. So um, a couple of years ago, just being in the hotel business, I loved it. I love the hospitality, but I wanted to mirror what I'm super passionate about. So I just went with, you know, let's research what can give me the travel experience, what can give me culture, what can give me new perspective and new ways of life that's so important to living out your life. Right. Um, and I came across two things, one, cruise ships, and two, being a flight attendant. And flight attendant just fit everything that I wanted fit my want of quality of life, fit my passion and everlasting want of learning new things, going different places. So it's very exciting and it's ever fulfilling. It's so interesting to hear you mention cruise lines because I feel like those are often forgotten. I mean, for myself growing up, I was obsessed with aviation. So you could not tell me that I wasn't going to be a flight attendant. Like it was uh, essentially my dream and as I learned more and as my interests changed I adapted a different way to still be within that realm but one thing that never came to me was cruise and so to hear you say that I'm like that's so true you're still seeing the world and you're doing it on the sea uh, <laughs> so it's like inside of the skies but I'm like I never really even thought about cruises so yeah you know like because um people who are on cruise ships, they never really around to talk about it or to self-promote themselves. Like I work on a cruise right. ship, oh my God. So um, yeah, that was one of the things that I was like, you know, you know, I'm happy to be gone. I'm happy to be on the road, but once in a while you have to center yourself back, bring it home, do your laundry. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that, you make a very good point, which is I'm like, I don't even think I've met very many uh, cruise ship attendants or just folks that are working on cruises because like you said they're nine times out of ten and not around so it's <laughs> a good point <laughs> um cool so i'm gonna switch over to our, my next question for you which is what is it exactly like being a flight attendant you know there's so many myths and there's so much chatter but i feel like a lot of the chatter comes from people that aren't actually flight attendants so share with our audience you know what that experience is like for you well, it's first and foremost, I always like to brand it as a lifestyle because it's, it took me a long time to transition, you know, from a nine to five or just, you know, a schedule type environment to, you know, being on call or being, I'm based out of New York City. So mm -hmm. driving all the way there and then, you know, seeing where you end up. Um, so it's very fast paced. It's very long hours. It's a lot of interaction. It's, um, you know, equally as much as all of that busyness, it's equally a lot of rest. And that's the balance that you have to find between that two. And then also the biggest and best thing is experiencing so much that the world has to offer. Experience of different types of people and what stories they share and what they bring to you and to your day. Um, whereas, you know, some people, they learn something new every day. I learn like 25 things that are new every day. It's just, it's an incredible experience. It's, there's something always different. There, it's a different day. You never know what you're going to expect that could okay. be, you know, <laughs> trying, but, um, for the most part, it's very rewarding because you're just, it's something new. Like I said, something new every day. And yeah. it's amazing. I think uh, you touched on a really good point, which is 
we like to learn new things every day and not and in most cases people always say you know you learn something new every day but to your point you learn an abundance of new things every day and there's so much education by way of travel um and that, that's one of the things that i love most i feel like I have a robust amount of knowledge because of all the destinations that I've visited. Um, and that's also kind of why I'm like, oh gosh, right now with everything that's happening. <laughs> you're, you're stuck and I feel like you and I are very much the same. We wanna be going, we wanna be, you know. Exploring. On and exploring, yeah. And immersed in a bunch of new ways of life and, you know, different types of people and stuff. Yeah. So yeah well that's actually a perfect segue to my next question for you is you know let's address the elephant in the room if we shall um COVID-19 obviously there is uh, a lot that has changed in regards to travel um surrounding this pandemic so for you in, in your perspective and in your industry what do you think um or how do you think I should say travel will be impacted going forward Going forward, I think right now we're on a forward motion, which is, it's hopeful, it's uplifting. Um, I think what's going to be important next is the more focus and encouragement on staying healthy and staying safe. Um, so we're definitely going to be seeing um, masks continuously and our philosophy within my specific company is we wear our masks to protect you, please wear it to protect us. So mm -hmm. you just have that, you know, humanistic analogy part of it like we care about you care about us and we'll make this world a better place um so yeah i think it's just going to be more so heavily focused now because we've learned so much we've learned how something can be spread just like that and yeah. travel is the underbelly of that that's you know it's a way to make one thing that's harmful get quickly over here mm -hmm. affect a widespread of people um so they're going to be looking at a lot of prevention, um, a lot more in depth of cleaning and um, encouragement to, you know, wash your hands, walk around on the plane with your shoes on. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just going to be heavily in tune with more so safety now and prevention and um, being healthy. Yeah. And, and, and I think that like you said, if if it's a two-way street and no one's blaming one or blaming the other, we will, you'll be surprised at how much more productive we are in that unity rather than expecting certain things and looking at other people or in this case, a specific airline to just essentially make magic happen. <laughs> it's like... You know, it's 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 uh it's a two way street. We're working with it together. I mean, for myself, I'm a traveler and I'm trying to do everything that I can to honor the uh, requirements that the airlines are adding now, and to just be self aware um, and do my part. That's the biggest thing is just do your part. And like you said, I wear my mask to protect you, and you wear it to protect me. So um, I, I love that that statement because it really does speak to the we're in all in this together and this community now is one anybody who's traveling we are all in this together we are one unit flight attendants pilots travelers and and everyone else in between so um thank you for that tidbit yeah so now <laughs> on a lighter note <laughs> i'm sprinkling my fairy dust because that's what i do as a goddess um <laughs> So I want us to jump into our topic for today, which is your five tips on how we, as your travelers, can make our flight attendants feel appreciated. <laughs> I, love that. I think it's so important. I think it's so important to anyone who provides service to make them feel appreciated because going back to one step, it, we're all in this together. And I think the silver lining to what has happened has brought a lot of humbleness and a lot of understanding that we are all human. So um, I first and foremost decided to ask this question to a bunch of my flight attendant friends. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important to have a universal top five answers that everyone can pretty much agree on yeah. um, so that who's ever listening can feel very confident and can be more 
I guess, like I said, confident to implement this on whichever airline you'd like to fly. Uh, so first and foremost, I think the biggest thing that we all could agree on was courteous, being courteous. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like? It looks like acknowledging us, saying good morning back or good evening. Um, you know, when we're going down the aisle, being cute, would you like anything to drink? And even if it's no, you know, we like you to take your headphones out, no thank you or anything. If we're talking to you and stuff, we just, we see so many people a day. We understand you come on the plane, you're tired or you're, you know, you want to watch a movie and stuff. So we really like when people talk to us. Like it, you know, we, we want to talk to you. We want to make your flight enjoyable. Right. Um, you, you enjoy the acknowledgement. Um, we love the manners. We love the please and thank yous, just yeah. like you as well do. Um, we love you using your call light and using your voice. <laughs> No touching the flight attendants, please. No touching. <laughs> you know, courteous is, I guess, everything your mom and your dad taught you. It's just remembering humanity first mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, we're here for your safety um, and just recognizing that. I think that was like the biggest thing. Um, the second thing I would say would be to pack your patience and pack your understanding because unfortunately we don't. We don't control the weather. <laughs> we don't control a lot of different things. And we have such an orchestra that plays to get that one flight out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things happen. Um, but first and foremost, understand that we want you to have a great experience and we will try our, you know, our best to make you comfortable, to give you information that you might not know where your next flight is going, how to get there, which airport, how does it look? Um, so Packing your patience and understanding, really important. And it, it, we definitely feel appreciated when you come from that place of like light and understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I think the third one would be to follow all safety instructions. Um, we are there first and foremost for your safety. And every single, I guess you could say rule or guideline has a reason as to why it is implemented, why it is there. Um, if you don't understand, that's perfectly fine. You can always ask us and we're more than happy to explain that because with understanding, you might be more inclined to tell your neighbor, you know, hey, you definitely need to push that bag underneath the seat, God forbid anything, you know? Um, so that's really important. And I guess a fourth thing would be help us help you. <laughs> if you are feeling sick, you, you can t tell me. I will get you that bag. I will make sure... You know, if you were to get sick, you are taken care of. You have everything to sanitize. You have everything to make yourself feel at least a little bit comfortable. Could you not make it to the bathroom? Tell us if you're scared of turbulence. I am more than happy to sit with you if I can, if there's an open seat, or just give you some great words of relaxation or just understanding how a plane works, how it flies, and how we're most safe, even in turbulence. It's so, it, it's a very scary thing sometimes, but just think of it as like a pothole in the road for anybody that's listening and anybody that's watching and they're like, oh yeah, I don't like turbulence. I never thought to talk to my flight attendant. But if you hear that and you're like, that makes you feel a little bit more at ease, just imagine if you were to open up to your flight attendant and just tell them anything that you're uneasy about. Um, and, um, yeah, also if you haven't eaten, let us know. We have extra snacks. It doesn't come out of my paycheck, so I'll make it rain. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. You need extra snacks. I got you. <laughs> we know everybody's going from one end to the end, you know, or one end to another, um, running through the airports. Not everybody has time to stop. So we, we fully understand that too. Um, and then like last but not least, Chocolates, goodie bags are always a plus. <laughs> uh, it's always a plus, you know, uh, bringing coffee. People went as far as to bring us like, you know, $5 Starbucks gift cards, Dunkin' Donuts gift cards. And that is like, wow, you know what our day to day is like, or you know that we're here. We're all here for 4 a.m. boarding. You know, like you're tired, I'm tired, but the difference, I have to put on a happy face. It's my job. You recognizing that it means so much, and honestly, we we're more we're very receptive to that. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring us something. Okay, what seat are you in? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you doing beverage service. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just something extra. It's something that shows saying, 
hey, I recognize what you're doing. I appreciate you. I love that you're keeping us safe and doing your job. So yeah, I, so I, those are the five biggest things. I, first of all, I love those tips. And as I was listening to them, I kept hearing a common theme, which to me was your flight attendants are people. Acknowledge them as such. <laughs> From just being courteous to the taking a moment to actually pay attention to the security briefing to, hey, just uh, I feel uncomfortable with turbulence. Do you mind being my friend for 10 minutes here or or two and a half hours if that's my flight time? Um, showing appreciation and gratitude and understanding that I've been here or since 4 a.m. and I'm welcoming you aboard. It, it's a common theme of just, hey, I'm a person too. <laughs> yes, yes. And you know, sometimes people get complacent and it, it's not even just flight attendants, it's everybody in the service industry. Um, but I think, like I said, this whole experience, um, even before I'm currently on a leave right now, um, going back in October. Uh, but right before I stopped flying i had amazing people on my flights i i had maybe 10 at the most mm -hmm. so appreciative so under it it just kind of changed the dynamic like everybody slowed down everybody saw who was essential and how they were doing their part to make you get to where you need to be mm -hmm. uh, so or you know giving you what you need in order to survive or you know, have a better lifestyle and stuff. So yeah, I think, think this is a silver lining and I think it's only going to be upwards from here. But if you can remember anything, just remember that flight attendants are human too. And uh, we really do appreciate acknowledgement and we want to have you have a good time. Yeah. I mean, every time I fly, I'm always just like, Hey y'all. Like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm like, hey, you have a great outfit on, or oh my god, you have such a nice smile. Like, I mean, that's me, that's my philosophy, that's my flight. You're on a flight with me, that's what you get. <laughs> facts, though, and and like you said, and like we said earlier, it's that two way street, it, that communication and that breaking of the barrier or that invisible barrier that we've created when it's just like, that's your girlfriend, hey girl, hey, and you keep it moving. and it sets the tone so uh, much differently than if you're just bypassing and in, 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 in your zone. Um, so I definitely, definitely encourage, if anything, just to say hello upon crossing the threshold onto that aircraft. It makes a difference. Yeah. So my last question. It really does, because. Hmm? No, go ahead, no, go ahead, sorry. I was just gonna say because it makes a difference like you mentioned so don't worry <laughs> Go ahead. next question right, my last question because I'm sure every flight attendant has one what's the craziest work story that you can share <laughs> but you have to make it interesting you know when you asked me this I pondered it and pondered it and I've seen everything from crazy passengers you know sickness in the air I I can talk about one crazy thing but I hope everybody has a strong stomach for this I won't go too much into detail um, but I've seen medical emergencies that you just like I mentioned earlier you never know what you're gonna get and sometimes the crazy is in magnitude or sometimes it's you know one situation or one person it, it's a widespread of things um, but I think it was recently it was on Halloween and it was the worst turbulence I have ever been in in my life so far and we had to be strapped in our jump seats because otherwise if we were not strapped in our jump seats we would have hit the ceiling for sure or hit the sides of the plane it was that violent the uh, pilot couldn't land just yet because the plane wasn't able to be stable enough so he had to come up, go around and around. And during this time, and you can imagine how violently shaking the plane was, the last 10 rows, it was a domino effect of getting sick. It was just one thing after another, and one person after another after another. Couldn't make it to the bathroom, didn't even have bags because we didn't know how bad it was going to be. Right. Unfortunately, 
sometimes the pilots can see that they can see how bad it is going to be but there's sometimes they don't know how violent or how nonviolent. sometimes they're wrong sometimes they're right mm -hmm. it just happens it's the air and um oh that smell really bad <laughs> i'm pretty sure everybody knows what i'm talking about um and we land and the passengers are all running to me handing me their blankets full of their sickness and oh i'm oh no please no no i don't bathroom throw it in the put it in your put it in your seat back pocket at this point the whole plane had to be put out of service because it was really bad and what the worst part was when we go to the gate the captain turned off of the air circulation. So in the back, you can only imagine the smell and only to which I was in the corner breathing like this, could I actually withstand not getting sick myself. <laughs> oh my God. This is my Halloween. This was my Halloween. I spent it in the corner, <laughs> strapped in my jump seat and then landed in the corner trying not to peek because I was in the back of the plane and we know how long sometimes it takes to deplane when you're fully in the back. Yeah. So yeah, that was treacherous. Um, <laughs> hope I spared the nasty details, but like I said, I have so many stories for days. I can have this Zoom meeting be like four hours to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you never know what you're going to get me. And now we put um, these sickness bags, every, every sickness bag goes in the seat back pocket. So if, and when like it just springs on you, reach in there. There you go. Yeah. You go. <laughs> We're trying to prepare you, but that was recently one of the craziest things that I had to deal with. And that was not fun. Cause after that I was just, <laughs> <trying> <laughs> I felt like it was on in my hair. I jumped in that shower. I was like, oh, God, God, God. <laughs> it's so nasty. That, that's definitely a crazy story and an entertaining one and an unfortunate one all in one shot. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, just on behalf of everyone, I apologize because that just sounds traumatizing. Yeah, I think the most traumatizing part was when everybody thought to bring it to me. They were yeah. handing cups. You can already imagine. What yeah, was yeah. Blankets. I, why me? Why can't I just bathroom, bathroom, not me? What do you want me to do? Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> that was so nasty. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Kristen. <laughs> well, I just thank you so much for your time today and obviously landing or ending on that note <laughs> was entertaining. I'm sorry, to laugh. I'm sorry to laugh at your pain. I really am, but that, that's a good story. I can only imagine you poor, you poor girl. But it's just... <laughs> um, so I just, again, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being a part of the travel industry, being a travel enthusiast and just loving what you do. And it shows um, your face literally light up every time you talk about your job. So uh, I can only imagine that it doesn't necessarily feel like work. It's, it's your passion and you're doing it. And it's a beautiful thing. And I can definitely relate to that. Um, so I will, uh, if you have anything else that you'd like to say to our, our viewers, please take a moment to do so now. If you have any projects that you're working on, if you have any, I don't know, websites or anything you want to share um, that I can support you and we can support you, please let us know. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you if you've gone through the entirety. Um, you really care about what a flight attendant has to say in the travel industry. I really do much appreciate that. And if you ever fly with me, I cannot wait to get you a drink. Just mention Natasha and the drink's on me. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Kristen.